everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at things that you think people would know but they do not know about piercings. I know you guys are really switched on when it comes to all things pierced, so the terms, the jewellery, the etiquette, everything that comes in the piercing world, you guys completely understand it. But there are people out there that have no goddamn clue, and yet they still, like, pretend like they do. Like, they'll use terms or they'll say things that, like, they think it sounds like they know what they're talking about, but they do not know what they're talking about. And that's what we're going to be looking at today, because some of these things I think you guys will find really funny, because you guys get it. I know you do. And I love you guys for that. These are some of the things we have to hear on a daily basis as piercers that literally just make us go insane. Uh, so let's do it. This is a glorious one. Olympic rings, navel rings, lip rings, nipple rings. This is what we have to deal with all of the damn time. We get asked, can I get a belly ring? It's not even a navel ring, but still just as bad. Can I get a lip ring? Can I get a nipple ring? Now you can put rings in all of those body parts. Like it is definitely possible. But when you're coming up and you're asking for a lip ring and we provide you with a lip ring and then you're like, no, I want a lip ring. This is a lip ring that is a librette bar, or you could call it a lip bar and we would still know what it is. Like, a nipple ring. Oh, I want to get nipple rings. Do you have nipple rings? Like, who since 1990 has had a nipple ring? Like, it's very rare that people have nipple rings, but people still call them nipple rings. And you get asked, do you have a nipple ring? Hell no, I don't have a nipple ring. Like, no offense to anyone who has nipple rings, but I'm not a fan. And no, most people aren't wearing rings in their nips, okay? Like, they're just, it's just too dangerous. It's just too dangerous for the delicate area to wear rings in. Like, not gonna happen. Please understand the difference. Gauge sickles. Because wearing your stretching tool is so much cooler than wearing actual jewellery. And ain't that the truth? People did this a lot more, like, years and years ago, but people definitely still do this. I feel like it's a very, like, teenage thing to do. Boys in high school love this shit. They wear these <laughs> all day, every day. They will, they will use this, which is called a taper, to stretch up and basically never change it to actual jewellery. So they'll never put a plug or tunnels in. They'll just, um wear this all the time. It's the people who think this will suffice as actual jewellery, but it doesn't. It looks tack, tack, tacky, and it ain't cute. No one wants to be a part of this. Like, just do not do it. I think some teenage boys might think that it's a look. Like, they definitely did when I was in high school. It was like a thing. When people ask for a tongue ring, so this one comes in with those other ones just before with the Olympic rings. If you're asking for a tongue ring, you're gonna get this. Like, not that we're gonna, not that we're gonna allow you to walk away with something like this, but this is what goes through our minds. We're like, oh, so, so you want something crazy like a tongue ring. Not a bar, because no one wears tongue rings. This isn't a thing, and this, this is what is going through my mind. I'm like, a tongue ring, wow, that's, that's idiotic. That's literally idiotic if you were to wear a tongue ring. But that's what we're thinking when you're asking for a tongue ring. You could ask for a tongue bar and we will get you something. But we will not get you a tongue ring. Another one that I just thought of while I was looking through all these was something <laughs> that I get on a daily basis and it, it never makes sense to me. So people will ask before getting a piercing, is it sore? They'll be like, oh, I want to get my nose pierced. Is it sore? Well, sore would be the current, <laughs> the current state of the piercing. But you're asking in advance if it's sore. What you want to ask is, will it hurt to get this? Not, is it sore? Because is it sore is the current state. And this question gets asked far more than you would think. And I can't even... <laughs> when they're asking me, is it sore? What goes through my head is, 
they're asking me if my piercing is sore, if my nose piercing is sore, because they do not have one, so it can't currently be sore. Does that make sense to you? I hope it does, because <laughs> it is something that frustrates me every single day when I get asked, is it sore? Even if it was the current state, I can't answer if it's sore, because you have to tell me if it's sore because it's your experience, not mine. Unless you're going, is your nose piercing sore? And I'll go, no, it is not because it is far, far, far beyond healed. Basic lessons in language. Didn't realize I'd have to do language lessons as a piercer. And if this ain't the best one, it's so well done. I'm so proud of whoever made this because this this is great. This is the type of things we need to have pasted all over the piercing studio. This is so clear and precise and hilarious because you don't even understand how often you hear these things. We've got a stretched ear, plugs, tunnels, gauges, insertion pins, taper, stretcher and expander. Now it's hilarious because it's like as it gets lower it's like you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid if you don't understand this. And I get not everyone can understand the terminologies, but sometimes it's like, Ugh. people ask for a stretcher and what they're wanting is a taper because they want to stretch up. So they want to stretch their ear, but they need a taper to do so, not a stretcher, because a stretcher is what the ambulance push you on. A lot of the time people will use like gauges, expanders and stretches as the name of the jewelry when they're plugs or tunnels like that's the biggest misconception there this is a perfect example so that you can see what we mean when we say please don't sleep on your piercings it's not just because you will get bumps you will get hypertrophic scars it's because you literally are f***ing up the alignment of the piercing when you're laying on it while it's still fresh by doing that it moves like it it moves the piercing basically it'll move it like this so that it becomes a slant and you may notice sometimes that when you've gone to change a piercing like when you can finally change the jewelry it's healed you notice that it's at an angle and you'll think that the piercer has been that shit and they've pierced it at a terrible angle but most of the time it's because you've been sleeping on it and you've caused that to happen yourself so do not blame your piercer for that. Now this is one that I feel like is potentially different all around the world. This is a Medusa. This is a Filtrum. A Filtrum piercing, not a Medusa. So this one I am definitely a culprit for and I think it's because of like where I am in the world. In Australia, most people and like piercers included call them a Medusa. It's very rare that people will call them a Filtrum but like that's what the part of the body is called. So it makes sense. Just as like your navel is your navel. And here you're getting your filtrum pierced so it makes sense that it's called that. Sorry us Australians be calling it a medusa. Oops. With piercings which side makes you gay? Like with nose and eyebrow piercings because you know my mum and sister told me one side makes you gay. I don't think your mum and sister understand how piercings work. Anything you are thinking that a piercing is going to like portray to the world is incorrect. A piercing is a piercing and that is it, full stop. Get a piercing because you want one. It is such a damn ridiculous concept and it just needs to be gone. That is just like an old myth that I don't even know who made that up, but those people are gone and they are irrelevant and they were never relevant and whoever made it was a fool. It's infected, infected, it got infected so I took it out, infected, infected, my piercing is infected, infected, infected. Every single day I have to hear this all the goddamn time. Your piercing probably isn't infected. An infection is a whole different thing to if your piercing is inflamed or if you've got a hypertrophic scar. It's completely different. Piercings can go through all different phases in their life cycle and basically like most people just assume it's infected. And some people, this is like a thing you hear a lot, is because people come in and they'll be like, it's infected, my piercing's infected and it's your fault, like you pierced it and it's infected. You have a look at it, it's not infected. So it's generally because they've been sleeping on it or because they bumped it and it's red. The knowledge that the everyday person has about piercings tells them that if it's painful or if it's inflamed or anything like that, it's infected, 100%, that's it, it's infected, you've infected it, your filthy establishment has made it infected. When generally this isn't the case, and you could go to a doctor and ask them and they will tell you you don't have an infection. Quit coming to us and telling us that you have a goddamn infection when you bloody do not. Because we will look at it and tell you you don't. And no matter how many times we tell you, most people don't believe us. 
If you can think of any of these silly little misconceptions or myths that people come up with about piercings, please write them in the comments down below. I would love to hear all of them. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like down below. And if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel and I will be back very, very soon.